So in this video for Hatshepsut, we'll be having a look at a couple of really important uh, scenes that Hatshepsut uses to legitimise her claim to the throne during this time period. And they're called the Divine Birth and the Coronation Scenes, both of which are located here at Deir al-Bari, which is Hatshepsut's mortuary temple in the middle colonnade, which is that middle section there towards the back up on the wall. They are separate scenes, but they do form an overarching kind of connected narrative. So the Coronation Scenes continue on after the Divine Birth Scenes. So the divine birth scenes, what they really demonstrate is Hatshepsut being physically the daughter of the god Amun. And the way that happens is that Amun comes down disguised as Hatshepsut's father, Thutmose I, and impregnates Hatshepsut's mother, Queen Amos. So Hatshepsut is then physically the daughter of Queen Amos and uh, the god Amun. Uh, and that's what's represented here in this first image, is that actually happening. So that is... Amun on the right hand side, we can tell it's Amun because he's wearing that jewel pl plumed crown. Um, and he's impregnating the queen Amos, who we can see wearing the vulture headdress, by pressing or touching her lips with that uh, unk, which is the Egyptian symbol of life. So Amos, uh, sorry, Amun comes down in, in the guise of Thutmose I and impregnates queen Amos, who there uh, with Hatshepsut, who there, therefore gives birth to uh, the god's daughter. So Hatshepsut is physically the daughter of the god Amun. In the next scene, we can see a couple of other gods leading a pregnant Queen Amos uh, uh, to the birthing room. Um, and she's led by Hecate and Knum to give birth. So we can see a slight bump. It is very hard to see, but we can see a slight bump here indicating that Queen Amos is pregnant. In the next scene, Hatshepsut has been born. There are some other scenes which I, I didn't show you, but Hatshepsut is born, and we see Hatshepsut suckling from another god, suckling from the goddess Hathor uh, in the guise of, uh, in her cow form. Um, and this obviously gives strength, gives strength to Hatshepsut. So these scenes, historians argue, were used by Hatshepsut to, to try and show that she has a, a very close relationship to Amun and therefore justify her claim to the throne because she is physically the daughter of Amun. Uh, and these were used by some later um, Egyptian kings as well to justify their claim to the throne. But what's important to remember is these divine birth scenes had never been done before. No king had ever done them before Hatshepsut. They were a very clear innovation of hers to most likely justify her claim to the throne. The next scenes are the coronation scenes. And very simple scene, what we have is Hatshepsut crowned by both Amun and another god called Atum. So the fact that Amun is crowning Hatshepsut indicates that it's his desire and it's his wish that this is what should happen. So this is in the, it's, it's in the next sort of register. It's in the same area in the middle colonnade, Deir al -Bari, but it's another indication that Hatshepsut's reign is the will of the god Amun. So there's a very brief overview of both of those scenes, the divine birth and the coronation scenes.